Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Wonderful. You ready? Yay. I'm not, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm really glad you're here today. This is, if you ask me, an extremely important topic, a topic that's very timely, a topic that can be used any day, any time, any month, any year. Uh, and this is what we're going to cover. Uh, and before that, I think just about everybody here knows me. Uh, and uh, for those who are not here, uh, I'll give myself a, a brief introduction to you. Uh, my name is Robert Landau, originally from New York City, was an actor there for many years, and then became a cruise director for many, 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 uh, actually many more. <laughs> and I say that because it was an incredible career quite a, a career filled with lots of happiness, actually. Lots of stress, lots of happiness. It was kind of like this. So life is a balancing act, whether it's a career issue or not. And I really learned to balance things quite well as a cruise director because a minimum contract for me uh, was for nine months without one day off. And if you can't connect with happiness during that, you're sunk, pardon the pun. Uh, so it really taught me a lot, and that is what I do now. I'm a national motivational speaker, and I speak at conferences and conventions in and around the Houston metro area, but also out of st state quite often, uh, on many of the topics that I am really privileged to speak to here. And I would like to thank this lovely lady who keeps winning many awards, quite frankly, for her sales prowess. And uh, Linda, thank you so much for this series. Uh, this series now here has been going on for four years? Yeah. I think at least, at least four years. And it is because of you, and it's also because of you. So thanks for that. With that in mind, this is what we're going to cover. And by the way, I live up in the woodlands now. Uh, so I'm, I'm home-based, so to speak. Because have you seen my socks? We cannot even begin this seminar unless you have all seen my socks. And I see that there are some who have not. Pardon me, I'm not a rockette, but here we go. What do you think? Sexy. Yeah, that gets you into a happy space, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, it doesn't take too much. Just go to Steinmart and get some socks. Anyway, this is what we're going to cover here today. It is all about happiness. We're going to talk about what happiness is, how to be happy, interesting stats that you might not be aware of concerning this timely topic of happiness, uh, 10 ways to find happiness. And as always, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. I don't think anyone in this group happens to be shy. <laughs> so please, let's make this as interactive as you feel comfortable making it as well. And to set the mood, let's start off with some quotes that have everything to do with this topic. Dr. Robert Anthony on happiness once said, most people would rather be certain they're miserable than risk being happy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Anonymous, an amazing towering figure in our history. One said, some pursue happiness, others create it. Mm -hmm. Dale Carnegie, a, a really active proponent of happiness throughout his entire career, once said, remember, happiness doesn't depend upon who you are or what you have. Rather, it depends solely on what you, and I'm going to augment this, choose to think. The operative word there being choice. Happiness really is a choice if you think about it, particularly if you are not feeling happy. And we're going to talk about that too. Finally, Henry David Thoreau once said, happiness is like a butterfly. The more you chase it, the more it seems to elude you. But if you turn your attention to other things, it comes and sits softly on your shoulder. I love it. So what does that quote mean to you? What does that mean about happiness? It's always there. You just got to stop looking for it. It's always there. You've just got to stop looking for it. What else? Someone does? It's very simple. It's around you. Ah. It's very simple. It's around you. And can I add to that? It's also very simple because, believe it or not, it is always within you. 
as well. It's just that we get disconnected from it. It's kind of like our breath. It's always there. We're just not always aware of it. Very well said. Anyone else? What does that mean to you? Just that it's available. It's mm. there. Yeah. But simply said, it's available. It's always there. And if you just slow down, you'll notice it. Ah, I love it. If you will just slow down, you will notice it. And that, my dear friends, I don't have to tell you, is the challenge today. Not even concerning happiness, but just slowing down. How do we just slow down? Ha ha, a topic for a future power hour seminar <laughs> is born. And you were all here for the birth process. Yes. Thank you very much. I'll take my cut. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll give you a percentage. Yes. Very well said, though. Yes. Thanks, everyone. So how would you define happiness? If your first name was Miriam and your last name happened to have been Webster, how would you define happiness in your book? <laughs> Not you, Miriam, that Miriam. Being content. Being content. Being content. That is a good one. Any other ideas? Being grateful. Being grateful. Wow. That's great. When you can hook up with that energy, that emotion within, that'll shift everything right away. Yeah. Yeah. Being content, being grateful. Anything else? Definition of happiness? These are great. I've got one, something that makes you smile, something that makes your heart smile, because happiness really is an internal process. It can be all around you, or it cannot be anywhere around you. But if you connect with it within and say, OK, I'm going to feel what it feels like to have my heart smile right now, do that. Feel what it feels like to have your heart smile. Nobody else is going to ask you that this week. <laughs> I can guarantee you, throughout the course of your busy lives, you will not be asked that question. What does it feel like right now to feel what it feels like to have your heart smile? Good. It feels good. It feels good. And some of these internal processes are incredible. And it just takes a second to do. You can do this while you're driving, right? Just don't close your eyes. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, this just goes to show you that we always have the tools that we need to shift things in a proper perspective. But the question is, do we take the time to do it? Do we remember to do it? Because it's one thing for me to say or ask you to do it, but then when you're alone and things around you are not very happy and they're big storm clouds, will you remember to do this that takes just a second to shift things? And it doesn't have to be like a huge shift. But the smallest step forward creates the biggest wave of change. Mm -hmm. So here's what the dictionary says. The first definitions of these words just never seem to make sense. The quality or state of being happy. Well, that's great. You're looking up what happiness is. If you don't know what happiness is, if they say it's, it's being happy, well, thanks a lot. Yeah, right. You know, as much money as Miriam has gotten from her name being lended to this venture, they could come up with a better first uh, a d a definition than that. But they kind of made up for it in number two here, which is good fortune, pleasure, contentment, joy. That hits it on the nail for me, as I hope it does for you. Happiness is a feeling, right? It's a real thing. We just can't see it. And sometimes the most important things in life are things that we can't see, but that are internal that we can feel. Happiness is also a choice, as we kind of mentioned before. Happiness heals. Happiness creates. Happiness is a tool that you can use. We never think of happiness in that way, but it really is a tool that can be used by you at any time. So here's proof. Think of a time when you were unhappy. Could have been this morning. Could have been earlier last week. It could have been last year. 
uh, I don't want to delve into sort of negative stuff, but just to prove a point, I'm going to give you a second to think of a time when you were not happy. And I'm not going to ask you to share it. Just think of it between you, yourself, and you. And now see what happens to you as you look at these next slides, thinking about that. So how do you feel now? Mm -hmm. So that was silent, no words involved. And again, the energy shifted from negative into positive in what, 30 seconds or however long that took? So that's a tool that you can use. Find photos on the web that you really resonate with that lift your spirits, that cause your heart to smile. And then use them when you need to shift that energy the most. If it worked here, why can't it work for you anywhere? What causes, what are some of the things that make you happy? Love. Love. Did you say the same thing? No, I was oh. going to say a good cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> a good cup of coffee, why not? Six o'clock in the morning. A good yeah, cup of coffee. He doesn't drink, he hates it. We've been married 37 years, he's never had a cup of coffee. A good cup of, he teases me because I like to have so her husband, in their 35-year marriage, 37-year 37 marriage, has never drank coffee, oh, right? Yeah. So do you need to drink coffee to deal with him every morning? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, first of all, congratulations on 37 years of marriage. That is Thank amazing. Yeah. And many, many more. And that implies that you'll have many, many more cups of coffee. Yes. But why not? Why can't a cup of coffee really get things going for you and set the day right. You know, that's your little motivational lift. Why not? Mm -hmm. And if that makes you happy, then keep doing it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and love is probably one of the biggest happiness generators because if that doesn't cause your heart to smile, I don't know what does. Yeah. Other ideas on what makes you happy? Music. Music is a huge one. Yeah. A huge one. Especially the songs that resonate. Yes. Yes, and it's cool because how cool is it to find a song or a bunch of songs that whenever you play them, yeah. you just get an instant lift. That's the healing power of music. And ask yeah. me and ask iTunes concerning me because I spent a large part of last week because I work out uh, every day just about and because I drive so many places to speak, music kind of helps me get there. Music helps me get through the workout too. And so I have been on iTunes like crazy last week. I think I, I, I helped their stock rise about 80 points <laughs> over last week because I found so much music that I hadn't heard of before that literally puts me into a happy state. So really what you're doing with all of these tools that we're talking about here from love to coffee to music to this to that is you're reconnecting with a part of you that you forgot was always there. And that's happiness. That's really who and what you are. Think about, and one of those photos will remind you, uh, an infant, a toddler that's just born, right? They're in a continual happy state. Unless something makes them uncomfortable, they'll let you know. But generally, life is in the moment and happy. Same with kittens. Same with puppies, right? All they want to do is play to, to really veg out on this happiness vibe of what life really is. But we tend to lose that somehow through our journey. But the cool thing is we've got plenty of time to remember what we think we've forgotten and reconnect. Why are so many people unhappy? Well, we want to make more money. 
There's now better technology that's never enough. Uh, we want a better infrastructure. We want better everything. And that's good that all of these things are happening for us at this very moment in time. But then what happens to be the problem with all of that? Expectations, because when you have advanced media, when you have all this amazing technology, uh, there are suggestions implied when you turn on the TV, right? Oh, I want to look like him. He seems to have a very happy life, and, and he looks great, and I, I want that body, and I want this, and I want that. Oh, those are, wow, I wish I could afford those clothes, you know? It's how we tend to react to all of the stimuli that is pushed in front of us each and every day that can cause us to wobble just a little bit. So we want a body image, right? But it's not so much for us, it's to be accepted by other people. And we think that that's going to make us happy. Excuse me, that's not connecting. That's a disconnect. Uh, status. Ah. Uh, I sure wish I earned as much as that motivational speaker earns. But all I'm doing is watching a YouTube of him speaking in front of an audience. But then my mind chatter starts to build that down and create a negative out of that. I don't know how much he earns, but why am I doing that to myself? What others think and say can cause us to fall from our happiness perch in a second, right? And many of you know that earlier in my life, I lived my life that way. I was heavily teased and bullied all the way through to junior high school, and I started to believe everything that was said about me. And I unfortunately became that unhappy negative stuff. Only later down the road did I realize, hey, just a minute, this isn't me. I gave that up years ago. Let me go back and reclaim that. And the coolest thing is I realized that it had never gone anywhere. It was always still inside me. I just forgot. I just forgot. And I let all these things cloud my connection with the true me. And that happens to all of us, and that's life. I think life is about remembering what we think we have forgotten. We had it all when we got here. And just a couple of years down the line, it started to sort of fade away. What others have, that's a huge one. We could do a seminar just on that. <laughs> and this is even huger, if there's a word. And if there isn't, I just created it, so there. What society and media dictate. That's such an intense message nowadays. You know, and, and what people don't realize is how powerful the media is. I read a book in a communications course in college called The Media is the Message, and it really is. What that box in your living room, and even worse, in your bedroom, tells us to do, we will do, often without thinking. And I think this is the problem we have today, because not enough happiness is being programmed to reach us through that box. What would you say the percentage of television content is now between positive stuff and negative stuff? Would you venture to agree with me that most of what you see on TV nowadays in my estimation, it's probably 80 to 90% negative. 90. 90? <laughs> yes. I was going to say 80, 20. 80, 20. 20 positive, 80. 20 positive, 80 negative. Yeah, yeah. Which is unfortunate because all that is is a box. It's a choice as to what comes through it. But even though we have more channels available to us as never before, you can channel surf, but again, 80% of what's on there is negative. Now, the only positive that I can derive from that is you got to turn it off when it gets to be too much and not just sit there and veg in front of it and then just do what makes you happy. Get up off the living room sofa figuratively and get out and be you. And that's how you begin to rebalance and reclaim yourself in the name of being happy. 
There's no reason why we can't be happy through life. And I am not talking about 100% Cinderella running through poppy fields every day. No, that's not life. But I would ask you to start as of this moment to bring more happiness into your life. Why not? You'll be the direct benefit of that. Your health will improve. Your spirit will improve. You'll be smiling more. And that's pretty cool. People want to smack me sometimes because I don't drink coffee in the morning. And boy, you would think that I've had five cups. Because from the moment that I get up, and I think it's because I was a cruise director, you know, you have to be on the job at 6 AM. And you've got to walk out of your cabin every morning like you're in a Broadway show. You know, without any personal baggage, because passengers don't want to feel that. They pay thousands of dollars to take an Asian cruise, and they flew from Chicago to do it, and you can't be walking around with your personal stress baggage on your back. So you got to motivate yourself to be happy all the time. When you walk into a very important appointment, you know, where a sale needs to be made or something like that, you're not going to walk into it like this. Good morning. You know, I don't really want to be here. I had a horrible weekend. Let me tell you what happened. Oh, it was just the most unhappy weekend of my life. You want to start a day like that? And what does your client think, right? No, the show must go on. You got a part to play, and you better play it. Because if not, who's responsible for that? You. So these are some tools that can keep you on track. Uh, we also have attachments to stuff that will cause us not to be happy. Past issues we choose to hold on to and not let go of, but this last one is the major cause, at least if you ask me, of unhappiness. And that's our personal mind chatter. Yeah. So look, something horrible happens. Something unhappy happens. It happens. Feel the pain of it, feel the hurt of it, feel the loss of it, feel the negative stuff attached to it. But what I say is, make the choice not to stay there too long. When the time feels right, and hopefully it's not too long, do what you can to lift yourself up and out of all that, right? Point your ship <laughs> towards happiness again. No storm lasts forever, but you can keep those clouds about you if you don't choose to move on in small ways. We mentioned at the beginning, the smallest step forward out of unhappiness will truly create the biggest ways of change for you. But who's got to do it? You. No one else is wearing your shoes. Nobody else should be grabbing the wheel of your cruise ship. So why are so many people unhappy? Mind chatter, because of that. But whose mind is it? Yours. Who can control it? You. <laughs> uh, and again, people are so unhappy because they are mesmerized about what comes through their TV set or their computer or phone screen. It's sad. Again, a personal comment here. You may think differently. I think one of the reasons why there's so much teen violence and stabbing and school stuff is because they see it in movies. They see it on YouTube. This is horrible. And I did not choose to look into this story, but I have a Yahoo email address. And so there are those news headlines <laughs> before, you, before you even sign into your account that sometimes you have to glance at that are very difficult to avoid. And I saw one the other day that said that somewhere in this country, um, there was a teen fight that broke out. And one teen stabbed another with a knife. And the guy now is laying on the floor dying in the middle of a, a street uh, in front of a Chinese restaurant somewhere. And all those other students wouldn't help this dying boy. They filmed it. They filmed him dying with their cell and he died. He died. They watched him die. And rather than get him some help, they were all filming it with their cell phone. What does that say about programming you know, and our society and culture? It's astounding. And it's very sad. And it's very unhappy. You know? But that's where we're going. So we need people like you and you to counteract that. And you can do it, right?
Smallest steps forward create the biggest waves of change. And here's a personal example. If you want one, and it doesn't matter if you don't, because you're going to get one anyway. Being a cruise director for close to 10 years was all about happiness versus unhappiness. Because, whew, uh, 400, what, 300 ports of call on close to 400 cruises right? And most of them were exotic cruises. And that's where you see a big cross-section of people. And on the seven-day Caribbean, you did also, right? But I could tell, standing on the gangway, waiting for the new passengers to arrive the first day of that cruise, what kind of a cruise it was going to be. And I got really good, and this is going to sound very weird and esoteric, but I got really good at reading people's energy. Because when you are put in front of so many people and you are emotional and you feel things, you can start to sort of feel things from people if you're open to it. It's a, it's a faculty we all have. And so I would stand at the gangway and I would look at these people and I would know two things. I would know if it was going to be a great cruise <laughs> or if it wasn't going to be a great cruise. And then individually, I could tell if these people individually were happy or unhappy. So what do you say when you're standing on the gangway and it's like three hours and the buses from Hong Kong airport are bringing the passengers from the States to the ship and you still have five more buses of people to go. You've had eight buses already and you're just standing there with a smile plastered on your face and you're still trying to get over the fact that the last cruise just ended that morning. And so I'm watching these people come up the gangway and most of them are very excited because they're finally going to take this two-week cruise around Asia, and they've been waiting for this for years, and so they're excited. But every once in a while, a passenger would look like that. Now, she was not a passenger, but she's an example of a passenger that looks like that. How would you define, if you read energy, which believe it or not you can, what would you define her energy or energies as? What does she look like? Huh? Negative. Negative? Sourpuss? Bitter. Bitter, yeah. yeah. And that's exactly how she came up the gangway. And I took one look at her, and internally I thought, oh my God, my mind chatter had a field day with me. They said, Robert, you've got to stay away from this lady. It's going to be a nightmare. And so she gets up to me, and as usual, in my little cruise director way, I'd say, Good afternoon, ma'am. Welcome aboard. I, I bet it was a long trip from the States. Welcome. I hope you have a great cruise. And she looked up at me and she said, who are you? <laughs> and you know, I've got a badge that says Robert Landau, cruise director, in big letters, so anybody can read it. But did she take the time? No. All she did was look up from her unhappy state and look right up at me and challenge me right away. And I said, well, I'm Robert, the cruise director. Welcome. And she goes, well, we'll see how welcome it is. And she goes, where's my cabin? And I said, well, I don't know what your cabin is, but we have staff just beyond me who will take you to your cabin and help you get familiar with it. Have a wonderful cruise. And again, she turned around in that face and said, yeah, we'll see. And you know, I'm from New York City. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. We have it in our DNA to give back negative stuff that people give us double. And so I can't tell you what I wanted to do with her. But I was a consummate professional. Cruise directors don't react like that. And I said, thank you. I hope to see you soon. And what I meant was, I hope to see you soon floating in the Asian <laughs> sea. But did I say that? No, because I wanted to be happy. I didn't want to be unhappy. So the cruise goes on, and this woman hated everything. She hated the amazing entertainment that I would bring out on the stage every night. She hated every totally amazing port of call. Totally amazing port of call. And so finally, at the farewell big caviar champagne cocktail party, at the end of this two-week cruise, because my staff wouldn't even go near her, the, the dining room staff didn't want to serve her. The bartenders would all try to find something to do when she would come up to the bar. I mean, she just, and then you're in Asia, right? The whole culture in Asia is to be polite, is to be happy, right? Is to serve. They hated her. And of course, I knew what they were thinking. 
typical American, right? Typical American, not happy with anything. And so I finally find her, I don't know what her name was, Mrs. Smith or something, and I went up to her at that cocktail party at the end of the cruise, and I said, Mrs. Smith, well, what do you have to say now that it's the end of the cruise? And I was all ready for it, all ready for it. I had my little psychic armor on, you know, and she astounded me because for the first time that tough vault-like veneer broke and I saw her, her face start to make a smile and really look at me for the first time. And she said, you know what, Mr. Landau, I have a confession to make. I've had a very, very tough life up until this cruise. I lost a very, very dear family member a week before I took this cruise. And I got to admit to you, I'm not a happy person anyway. And that is by choice. But, and this is very difficult for me to say, Mr. Landau, I want to thank you. I want to thank your staff. I want to thank your captain because you have shown me what it is to smile again. And I hope one day, once I get home, I'll, be rem I'll, I'll remember some of the things that I kind of connected with during this cruise. Thank you. I will never forget this. And so she starts walking down the hallway. And then she turns around, just as I was about to go back into the lounge where the party was. And she goes, oh, and one more thing. Thank you for teaching me that happiness is a choice. It's something that I'm going to make more of now. I'll see you tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning was the last day of the cruise. I was on the gangway just like I was at the beginning of the cruise, not uh, saying hello to everybody, but of course saying goodbye to everybody, and there she came. And you know what? She didn't look like that. <laughs> she looked like Santa Claus getting ready to deliver gifts. It was the most astounding transformation that I had ever seen. And she goes, good morning. And I said, Mrs. Smith, good morning. She goes, yep, it is a good morning. And you want to know why, Landau? Because I say it is. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, and I'll see you again. Bye. And she marches down. And the officer who was at the bottom of the gangway, who hated her, you know, she, she comes up to him and she goes, hey, you, smile. You look better with it. And he was like, <laughs> Uh, and so that was her. I saw her many years later on another cruise, and guess which version of her she decided to be? The heart smile one. So if she can do it, we can do it, right? The facts. Here are some studies and polls that conclude that it isn't one thing that makes everybody happy. And the proof was here. When I asked you what makes you happy, nobody said the same thing. Everybody said something different. True happiness happens to be a personal thing. Happiness means something different to everyone. So, according to a CBS News poll, Americans think of themselves as generally happy. And this really surprised me because I didn't think that was the case. And this is fairly recent, mind you. 48% of Americans say that they are very happy, while another 43% say that they are fairly happy. And that accounts for 91% of people that were polled. Just 9% of Americans say that they are not very happy. That really shocked me. But here's the deal. I think your happiness ratio fluctuates. You're not going to be a 10 all the time in the name of happiness. That'll go down to a four, but then it'll go up. And literally, it's not a different number every day. It's what time of day, because it fluctuates every moment, right? And I think that might account for this too. The most important factor in a happy life, this poll yielded these results. 56% uh, said family is the most important happiness factor for them. Health, 27%. Career, 6%, which surprises me too, because so many people value their worth 
on the career that they are presently engaged in. Where you live, 6%, and money, 3%. Uh, interesting, again, really messes with my preconceived notions about this topic. A happiness poll results, if you can't see from where you're sitting, it's a scale from 10% to 50%, hanging out with my friends, happiness, 25%. And this was a poll that was taken in uh, April of 2010. Spending time with my family, 31 and I love this, quiet personal time, 44%. We forget about quiet personal time, particularly in this day and age, but that is one of the major ways to reconnect not only with your happiness factor, but with you, with the parts of you that you thought you had forgotten about. Question, and you don't have to answer this verbally, something for you to think about. How often do you give yourself personal time? How much do you care about yourself and love yourself to give yourself personal time? And how about this? Each and every day. Now, personal time does not mean taking a two-week cruise out of Hong Kong. But personal time, huh, why not? <laughs> well, honey, send us a postcard, okay? <laughs> but personal time can also mean two minutes out of every day. Personal time can be putting on your favorite song in the car while you're driving to an important function. Yeah, I'm talking about personal time in small ways. You already drink enough coffee. <laughs> but personal time can be enjoying a cup of coffee in the morning, right? Personal time can be, oh, love. God, I kind of forgot about that. Let me figure out what that feels like for two minutes. Let me reconnect with that part of myself. You know, do it. The more personal time you take in small, timely doses, the better everything's going to be. You can get through any storm if, you, if you've got that foundation between you, you, and you, you, you and yourself going. What makes you happier, to have inner peace or extreme wealth? A survey asked its surveyors. 3% said, hey, you know what, I don't know. Uh, material wealth, 9%. And get this, inner peace, 89%. That totally shocks me. Because honestly, I would have switched, in terms of how I thought people would answer this, the money, the material wealth with inner peace. <laughs> Maybe. You could have been asking a lot of rich people. But you know what I think this also says? It says that because today everything is so loud, there's so much noise everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I went to a, a, a restaurant, local restaurant on Sunday for dinner. The music was so loud. And everybody just, you know, nobody noticed it. We're just so, and I just wanted to talk to the person I was with. But because I was hearing every hit from the 80s and 90s, instead of being able to really focus on who I was with, it really became too much noise for me. And I'm a New Yorker. I called over the manager very politely and I said, hey, turn the damn volume down in here, all right? I got Yelp. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do it that way at all. But I did ask them to turn down the volume. It's just there's so much noise. And the sad thing is we get used to so much noise. And it really does interfere with our thought process and our spiritual energy, if you want to call it that. So um, I think that's why so many people want to find a way to find inner peace. Because with that, they'll be able to breathe a sigh of relief, they'll be able to connect, and they'll be able to reconnect with happiness. Uh, again, a survey question with results. Of the top six most happiness-inducing activities, four are all arts-related. Number one was intimacy affection that produces happiness. Sports, running exercise, number two. And look at these next four. Theater, going to dance, going to concerts, singing, performing, 
uh, exhibition, museums, libraries, hobbies, arts, and crafts. The arts, as you implied, uh, are a great source of connection and happiness. Great source. So the more you can immerse yourself into whatever form of arts appeals to you, that's another way to get that connection back to. Things in life that make you feel unhappy. Money, financial concerns, 20%. Social issues, racism, poverty, and crime, 12%. World issues, 10%. Illness, healthcare, aging, death, 9%. I would think that that would be higher. Uh, career work issues, 8%. I would think that would be higher. Family issues, 6%. The government and politicians, 6%, although this is a couple of years old. <laughs> I think that might be a little different now, but that's just me. Uh, environmental issues, 4%, and spouse or partner relationship issues, 4%. So money and financial concerns seems to be at the top of the list, which makes more sense to me than some of the other survey results we talked about before. People spend, and this is from a study that used an iPhone web app to gather 250,000 data points on subjects' thoughts, feelings, and actions as they went about their lives. People spend 46.9% of their waking hours thinking about something other than what they're doing, and this mind-wandering typically makes them unhappy, right? Because when your mind wanders, if you ask me, it either wanders to one place or another, one of two. And to me, I could be wrong, you know with you, it'll either wander to a happy place or it will wander to an unhappy place. And most likely, wherever it wanders, it'll wander to something from the past, which is not in the present, or, just as bad, something in the future, which is not in the present. Which means to say that you have control over where you go with your mind and your mind chatter. So if you do happen to find yourself in an unhappy place, acknowledge it and then do what you can with some of the tools you have available at your disposal to lift yourself out of it. And even if those tools aren't available, being aware that you are now in an unhappy space is more than half the battle. All you can do then what you may need to do is just within yourself say, um, okay, I've been thinking about this for 10 minutes. How is that serving me? Is this a place I want to stay? No, all right, I'm just going to get up and, and distract my mind with something better. Uh, this is a quote from Killingsworth and Gilbert. A human mind is a wandering mind, and a wandering mind often is an unhappy mind. The ability to think about what is not happening is a cognitive achievement that comes at an emotional cost. Really, what we're asking you, all these surveyors and wise folks, and me being a very wise folk, don't you think? <laughs> yes. Is asking you to stay in the present moment. Because in the present moment, there's no happiness or unhappiness. It just is. This is the only moment there is. There is no yesterday, there is no tomorrow, there is not even the next hour. Why? Because they ain't here yet, or they already happened as we say in New York. So don't mess with them. Get it? Got it? Good. This is the only moment you got. Damn it, celebrate it, all right? <laughs> and I don't know why I'm sounding like Bugsy Malone now. <laughs> Mind chatter. Often our own worst enemy, often our least best friend. So with mind chatter, there's the little you, <laughs> this, right? And then there's the big you, the real you. And this is kind of what it looks like, right? There's real you, but then you have these two little things that keep whispering stuff into your ear. And they're also a part of you, mind chatter. But you have to ask yourself this. All right, so I'm going down this route. Am I more than my mind chatter? Same difference, right? Good and bad, chatter, chatter, chatter. Good, evil, good, evil, good, evil. 
So how real is your chatter? Because your chatter either has to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, with something in the past or something that hasn't happened yet in the future. Is your mind chatter really you? Fear. That's usually what happens when you think about something in the future concerning mind chatter. And fear stands for future events appearing real. Future events appearing real. It's not here yet. And you're building all of this negative stuff, making this horrible tasting cake in an oven of mind chatter, and then you got to eat it. Why? Why even bother with it at all? So here's a very quick way when you find yourself immersed in mind chatter and you can't get out of it. The breathing process that you are naturally engaged in right now as you sit there is an energy of the present always. In your natural breathing process, there is no energy of the past, no energy of the future. It's, it is what is here and now. So very quickly, don't move, don't change a thing. Just shift your awareness to your breathing process right now as you're sitting there. Natural breaths, not No, natural breathing. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're putting yourself back into the present moment. When you find your mind chatter overtake you, just stand up figuratively and say, uh, no, <laughs> I'm returning to breath. I'm being aware of my natural breathing process. And that's, it'll get you out of it in a minute. But then if you return to the mind chatter, do this again. It's a new muscle you have to build so that you can use it whenever you need to. It's as simple as that. And you know what you did? You just started to meditate. Breathing, being aware of breathing is a meditation. And meditation is always about the present moment. Mindfulness is what that is called. Mindfulness is being in the present moment, is a dance of happiness. Think about that for a minute. Let your mind chatter, chew on that, dear friends. Ah! So, before we close, here are 10. Yes, count them 10 at no extra charge to you. 10 major ways to find happiness. Number one, be mindful of the present moment. Just what we were talking about. Stop and smell the roses. Remember, anybody remember that hit from many years ago? Uh, attitude is gratitude. Somebody defined happiness as being grateful. Mm -hmm. And focus, focus. Ah, oh, I just can't focus. I can't seem to focus. That's a choice, too. If you don't think you can focus, then you won't focus. If you think there's hope for you focusing, then start to do it. Oh, Kelly, let me. You, do you want me in the picture or out? It's okay. You don't want me in the picture. It's okay. No, no. That's, that's all right. I can take it. I can take it. I, I'm, I'm in an unhappy space right now, but the thing is I'm aware, aware of it, and I'm going to return to breath. See? Did you see this miracle transformation? Thanks to you, Kelly, dear. Go ahead. I got it. Uh, continue, or you want me in the photo? Oh, you got it. Okay. God, she still doesn't want me in the photo. She doesn't. God, this is the last seminar of mine she's going Get to attend. It. Get over it. It's okay. Oh, don't let him get you, see? All right, pose, Robert. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God, finally. I've known her for like five years, and she's finally getting it. Number two, don't judge. This also has to do with mind chatter. That'll take you into a very unhappy place, and you'll swim in the mud of it. Don't compare yourself to others. We are all in the same boat, on the same cruise through life. Uh, and be thankful for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Life is about what you have. And really, it's about what you have in here, not so much out here. But don't ask me to do without all my jackets. <laughs> I just don't think I could do it. That would put me in a very unhappy place. That's another seminar. How to be happy with your jackets is what I'm going to call it. I know you'll all attend. Yes? Where do you store them? Where do I store them? Do you have a room? I have two rather large closets. 
because now, believe it or not, and I will be Guinness book qualified soon, I have them all insured. No, no, I should. <laughs> yeah, some people have their legs. Some people have their legs insured. I need to insure my jacket. I have close to 60 jackets now. And I would say about 45 of them are made for me, like this one. Mm -hmm. He finds the material and takes it to him. Yeah, I find the material from Joanne's, and then I send it to Denver. And a friend of mine who is not even a tailor but is good with a sewing machine <laughs> follows the simplicity pattern and makes these jackets for me. Aren't you glad you came today? The secret to life has been revealed, and he will never be the same. <laughs> Number three, focus on poisonal wealth. As we say in New York, poisonal. Everybody say that. Poisonal. That's right. Oh, I christen you, New Yorkers. What an honor to have, again, at no extra charge. You're getting amazing value today. It's not about how much you have in the bank. It's not about how many jackets hang in your closets. Studies prove that people who put money high on their priority list are more at risk for depression, anxiety, and on top of it all, low self-esteem. Very, very true. And what happens? We end up doing that to ourselves through our mind chatter. Number four. Choose to create realistic goals. It's a great brain distraction and something very positive to do. Have goals of a positive and productive nature, and then don't just talk about them. Don't just write them down. Take the steps to realize them as well. Change is a key word here. Be open to change. That gets you further down the road. Partake in what brings you joy, and most important, have fun. You've seen a good example of that here. I may appear to be crazy to people, <laughs> but it's all about having fun with whatever we do together. Because I could present this topic in a very corporate, you know, sort of lecture type way and, and do this. Yeah, hi, my name is Robert Landau. I'm going to talk to you for the next 60 minutes about how to be happy. So let's begin this 60 minutes now. Torture. <laughs> let's begin this torture now, <laughs> right? It's all about passion. It's all about how you choose to approach something. And I would advise you to always approach stuff with some modicum, some level of humor in your life. Because, wow, it makes getting through it so much easier. Number five, always strive to be social. Keep company with like-minded folks. Do things with your family. Or sometimes it takes a while to realize who your family really is. And it may not be blood. <laughs> you got that right. Mm -hmm. And that's OK, right? Because where is it written? I'm a very out-of-the-box guy. And I don't like labels, and I don't like the way society or culture has crafted things. I like to go with how I feel, because I think that's a better guide than any textbook uh, written about any subject that we need to deal with emotionally in life, right? Um, so do things with people that you resonate with might be a better way. Uh, to talk about that bullet point. Go to positive places. What does that mean? Things like this. Things like this. <laughs> Dear, you've redeemed yourself now. I love you again. Yes. Think positive thoughts. Think positive thoughts and then go to places that echo that for you. Like things like this. Like, I don't know, hearing music, going to a concert, being with positive people. You know, there are a million ways you can do that. Or if you can find it, a movie that's positive and happy. Mm. Try finding that. <laughs> it is a lifestyle choice, right? It's a lifestyle choice that you make. But boy, I'm telling you, if you start to make these subtle changes, you will really not only feel them within, because true change always starts from within, you will also start to see it without. And that is so cool. How cool would it be for things not to be the way that they've been, but much better than they were 
before. But who orchestrates that? You. You. Six, enjoy what you do. And if you don't, fake it. <laughs> I'm serious. Fake it till you make it. There's a lot of positive redeeming value in that. Um, find ways to love your work, even if you don't, because that's what you're doing in the present moment. Uh, what is your passion? What is your passion, personally, professionally? Is your heart in it? Realize your hobby and interests. I left, I was in the senior retirement community industry for many years back in Denver, which is where I moved from to here. And I started out as a sales and marketing manager at an uh, independent apartment community with no food services or, or um, um, cleaning staff, right? It was really apartments and filled that to about 60% and then realized that activity directing was something that I would prefer because it's kind of like a cruise director uh, ashore. And so I did that for many years in Denver and then I was offered a corporate position with a company like this one that builds senior retirement communities all around the country, but based in Denver. And I became, this is true, their vice president of fun. Wow. That was my title. And what it meant was that I was in charge of all the activity directors at all of our communities nationwide, and I created innovative activities programming for them that would differentiate our communities within a 13-mile marketing radius of where they were to give them a, a little plus of a sales advantage and marketing advantage. And I was there for close to four years, had an amazing salary, but it wasn't my passion because I'm not a corporate guy. And so what is my passion is what you see me doing right now, being a motivational speaker. So it's like one day you wake up and decide, okay, I wanna be an actor. Well, that's really nice, but who knows that you're out there? How do you find an agent if you don't have years of top-notch experience? The list goes on and on, but it didn't matter to me because I'm doing what I'm passionate about. And somehow the pieces will connect. Uh, and that's what I would like you to think about doing too, because that's one way of being happy. Okay, I can go to sleep tonight knowing that I didn't make a billion dollars today, but I did what I love doing, and that is priceless. And that's joy infusing too. Number seven, always strive to help others. You are in an amazing industry where the whole thing is to be of service to others, to help them heal, to help them feel better. And that's an incredible thing to do because if you ask me, that's what life is all about. It's not about me. It's about me being service to you. Because if I'm in service to you, I know the way stuff works that I will get it back double. <laughs> Be of service. It's more important to give than to receive. Volunteer. Give it away. Pass it on. Number eight. Huge. If you get nothing more from this than this, smile. Right? Everybody, give me the biggest Linda. That's amazing. My God, you could see that with the lights <laughs> off. Lord, that smile. And everybody, give me a smile like Linda gave. Big smile from earlobe to earlobe. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, you know what your brain does about that? I found this out from another study I found. Your brain does not know the difference between a fake smile and a real smile like you just gave me. When you are fake smiling, your brain actually thinks you are smiling and sends all that good energy to all your cells to lift you up. So if you don't feel like smiling, if you don't feel like experiencing joy and happiness, fake it because your brain right now is thinking, I'm giving myself the biggest gift of joy ever. And I'm thinking of that damn lady I talked to you about on the cruise ship instead. <laughs> but it's great. Uh, smiling lifts your soul. It is positively addictive. Do it even if you don't feel like it. It's in the way you walk. It's in the way you talk. It's in the way you breathe. Place your smile into others' hearts. What a wonderful mission to have in life. Oh, me? Well, I place my smile into others' hearts. Watch. <laughs> See? It worked! It worked! 
She gave it back with a resounding laugh. She just laughed because I was making a damn fool of myself, probably even. Yes, I know. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Nine, be grateful. There's that gratitude again. You have so much to be thankful for. Please continue to realize it each and every day. Thank everything that comes into your life, positive or negative, because they are amazing life teachers. Welcome any tests that come your way. Because if you fail, so what? Just get up and keep moving forward. Mm. 10, please always remember you are never, ever alone. Personally and professionally. Never, ever, ever alone. Wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. You're in great company all the time, and it is in the knowing and awareness of this most important fact. And that alone should bring you a bit of joy, a bit of happiness. Other ways, make the choice to think happy. Feel happy. As we said, these are all choices. Thoughts are things. Science now backs up what millions have been saying for eons. Thoughts, the thoughts you think, turn into things. Don't ever forget that. Other ways to do it, to reconnect with joy or happiness, affirmations, mantras, right? Before I get out of bed every day, I say, you know what? Today I'm going to find new ways to experience happiness, new ways to experience joy. No matter what happens, I will get through it. Great. Every morning, if you say that, watch how your life will change. Here's a great affirmation, I am happy. Not I will be, because when is that going to happen? Even if you don't feel this, say it. It's like the smile. You could have been feeling terrible, and then when you smile, or when you saw those photos a while back, it shifts. This has the power to shift too. Everybody say this with me. I am happy. Say it again. I am happy. One more time. I am happy. This is great. Lots of smiles there. This is how thoughts become things work. You have a thought and you have a feeling. And through repetitive habitual thinking, it actually makes an energetic imprint within your body. You have a reaction because your brain picks all of that thought process up and sends that energy to all of your cells, and it is a reaction. And then it becomes real. Thoughts turn into beliefs and they become things. It really does work that way, and you are the captain of that ship. So the question is, are you happy? And the answer is an answer that is totally up to you. And now you have a few more tools at your disposal to know what to do when the answer isn't in the affirmative for that question. And if it isn't in the affirmative, don't freak out. Don't veg out on the unhappiness. Shift it just a little bit. You can do that. What's the number one deterrent to being happy? What do you think the answer to that question might be? Mm -hmm. And we can actually siphon it down to one thing, because you've all answered it. You. <laughs> you are the number one deterrent to being happy. So just shift it a bit. It's nothing more. It's not rocket science. In closing, here are some more quotes for you to leave this auspicious occasion. And before I do go down this final route with you, how was today? Did you get some things that you can use? Yes. And one more question, and answer it honestly, because I know you would. The way you felt when you came in here today to experience this, do you feel a little better after this hour or so now that you have experienced this? Yes. yes. OK, good. That was you. That was not me. Right? That's your power. That's not mine. So keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So closing quotes. 
WP Kinsella said, success is getting what you want, but happiness is wanting what you get. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, for every minute you are angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. <laughs> Aristotle, you see how this topic has been with us for centuries, yes? Happiness depends upon ourselves. Love this one, William Arthur Ward. Happiness really is an inside job. I mean, can you see it anywhere? Where, how can you see happiness? It's all in here. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you at the next one of this. Until then, keep smiling. God bless.